Hello there friends and welcome to the first part of my A model 172nd scale Indian Air Force AN32 build. The motivation for building this kit came from my cousin who was a navigator on an AN32 and clocked over 2000 hours in them. So, I said why not make one for him and surprise him. It was a simple enough idea, but executing it would take all my patience and skill. Every step of this build was a challenge. So, I thought why not share my experience with you? I must point out right at the beginning that some of the things I tried did not turn out too well. But I guess we can all learn from our mistakes. Or in this case, you can all learn from my mistakes and have a laugh while at it. Anyway, so here is the A model AN32. Surprisingly, I could not find any other manufacturer for this aircraft. So I guess if you want to make it, this kit is your only choice. It's a rather big box. On the side, some brief notes about the AN32 and the address of the distributor, which is in Poland. A model itself, I believe, is a Ukrainian company. On the other side, pictures of some other models available from the same manufacturer. Let's open the box and see what's inside. We have the instructions in black and white and a large bag with all the plastic parts. We have seven small sprues here, but wait, that is not all. There are more, lots more. In all, 18 plastic sprues and two clear sprues. Okay, let's take a closer look at a few of them. Here's one half of the fuselage. This is more flash than I have seen in a long time. And it's not just the extra plastic. The problem is compounded by the fact that one can't tell where the kit piece ends and where the extra plastic begins. So cleaning parts like this one may prove to be rather challenging. Right. The wings seem to be in a better condition. Very little flash here. The tail pieces seem clean enough but the ramp has a lot of flash on it. Overall there is a lot of extra plastic on these sprues. Some sprues seem to have a ton of it, other pieces less. But all the pieces will have to be cleaned carefully before they can be used and I suspect there is going to be plenty of sanding and putting before we are done with this kit. Here are the clear sprues. These don't look too bad but they're not great either. The plastic is not as clear as one has become accustomed to with the newer kits. But I guess it will have to do. The decals look a little yellow. I guess that comes with age. But once again, these are no cartograph decals. I will be ordering some aftermarket decals for this kit if I can find any. So far I have not been successful. The problem is that in the new paint scheme in the Indian Air Force, we have a large decal on the port side in Devanagari, which is the Hindi script. So I guess I will have to find a decal for that or I will be in deep trouble. So here's one more unique thing about this kit. None of the sprues or the paths are numbered. So one has to constantly back refer to the sprue map here on the instruction sheet. Identify the sprue by shape and then try and find the part. I have never seen this before and with so many paths in the kit. What should have been a fairly simple task turned out to be one time consuming exercise. 
Well, before anything else, I decided I should clean up the fuselage and see if it lines up. So when I try and line up the two parts together, they don't come together at all. I decided to improve the fit by sanding and smoothing the edges. After doing this a couple of times, finally a fit that I could live with. This joint will take a lot of putting and sanding, but at least this was a start. Let's start with building the interior. I start off by looking up the part number, in this case number 50. Now to look up number 50 on the sprue map. Okay, wait, that's the wrong number. That's the number for the decal, I guess. What I actually need is number 26, which is here. Now to find which sprue this is, right? Let's cut this piece off. I cross off the number from the instructions sheet so that I know which pieces I have already cut off. And now for the next piece, which is 27. Let's put the cockpit together. And here's one more pleasant surprise. Most parts have no witness marks or pins and holes or anything to guide you where the pieces go. So mostly I worked by guesstimation and prayed that the parts did not get misaligned and become a source of a huge problem later on. Despite the difficulty in putting this together, the cockpit does appear to be fairly well detailed. Now, we have to glue this ramp in place. And once again, there is nothing on the parts to hold them in place. So I just put them flat on the table, line the two parts up and apply the glue.
I give all the parts a base of Tamiya black. The interior will be painted with XF66 light grey. I paint inside the panels first and then blend everything with multiple misty layers. This way I can get some pre-shading to show through the paint. The seat covers and a few other parts are hand painted. Now to fix the cockpit decals in place.
I will now use this Citadel Dry Necron compound, which actually stands for silver paint for dry brushing, to do some sponge chipping. I focus on the floor and the edges as these are the places most likely to see more wear and tear. The work so far is sealed in with a couple of layers of gloss varnish. Now I apply some Tamiya panel line accent wash. The extra wash is wiped away with a Q-tip moistened with turpentine. As you can see, I am using the wash to act as a sort of post shade. But it's a little too dark, so I take a flat brush and remove more wash till I am left with a subtle shading effect. Finally, all the interior parts are glued in place. Well fellow model makers, I guess this is all for the first part. I will soon be posting the next part of my struggle with this kit. Do tune in. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do like and subscribe. Till next time, good luck and happy model making.